County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez says a Houston area motorist is in custody after allegedly firing into another car, igniting fireworks that critically injured two children. Two young children had suffered serious burns along with their parents. On Sunday night, Byron Rivera surrendered to investigators and he is now in jail on four counts of an aggravated assault. Uh, we believe that this all stemmed from a, a road rage incident. Harris County Sheriff's Lieutenant Jeff Stauber says the suspect is remorseful and cooperating with investigators. The suspect himself um, needed a couple days to collect himself, as, as, as he put it, but the fact that those uh, children were injured, it was very important for him to come and talk to us, which he did voluntarily. Rivera allegedly got into an argument with the family's father, who is the driver of a truck in Harris County outside of Houston on Thursday. The father tried to drive away, but Rivera allegedly opened fire on the truck. More at townhall.com. The following is an America Matters media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters media. Stories we've told, boys, their own stories we've told, standing at the time. Stories we've told, boys, their own stories we've told, till the end of time. Oh, there's no more lies. Welcome to What's the Story? My name is Janice Hermson. I'm your host. Hey, Jim. <laughs> the best host. <laughs> the hostess with the mostest, as they say, right? Yeah. I would like a hostess cake. <laughs> Doesn't that sound good? Yeah. Well, see, if you would have made it to our event on Tuesday, we had some hostess but no, cakes. But you didn't have gluten-free ones. Those um, would probably be cruddy. Actually, one of them might have been. One? I'm not certain. Yeah. Well, we have d- different varieties, so, okay. you know. So if you did miss our event, you can come on Thursday. I love There's another one. <sighs> Paul loved cup the cupcakes. Yes. And snowballs. Yes. And I loved the white powder sugar donuts. Listen to her <laughs> going off, and we have no sweets today. And Doug I was going to say, where, where's Ed and his stale peeps? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're going to have to do without. Yeah. We have to live without it. I brought a bar. I could share my bar with everybody. That's it wouldn't okay. go very far. <laughs> Rations. Power it's bar, so you only carb. get about a no, quarter. No, it's a low carb. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> low carb bar. I was going to say power bar, so anybody could only everybody operates at quarter power. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we have to what include be you in, so in? Yeah. we have to one oh, fifth. Yeah. One fifth, yes. Come on. We don't, we don't leave you out, Craig. Oh, so I'm here with April Kempler, Doug Ashby, Ed Knoll. We're all here. The We're all ready to. All that's here. right. We're ready to rock and roll. And this segment is brought to you by Larue Press. We offer hassle-free publishing, printing, and business services for businesses and writers. We're located at 280 Greg Street in Reno, Nevada. But you know what? We serve everybody across the nation. You don't have to be here for us to help you out. And especially those people that have businesses that you'd like maybe a Nevada address or you need to have your mail forwarded to you because you're a traveler or a business that's just busy, busy. Or right? An answer. Answer service. phones. Yes, we do that for you guys yeah. when you guys go places. Yes. So, yeah. So, check us out. LRPNV.com. And I already introduced everybody. Um, everybody have a good weekend? Yep. Oh, oh Doug's right on. Show's Doug. over. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I got to mow the lawn again. Lucky you. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. That's the highlight. Wow. Yeah, Doug, Doug says, isn't it going to rain? Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. It felt like Come a long, on. long, long weekend. <laughs> Did it? Oh, we had long. We had birthdays to celebrate. We mm-hmm. do a family um, celebration of all the birthdays. And in June, we have three different birthdays. So oh. everybody came over. We were a little late. So we did this in July oh. instead of in June. And boy, did we have a good time. Okay. <laughs> well, you have a big family. I do. That's a lot of yes. fun. Yes, but I miss my mom, I have to tell I you. Know. It was just so oh. hard because, you know, when we have these events, she was kind of the glue that stuck us all together. And, and so it's kind of like, oh, she's not here. Yeah. So. So, Legacy, you got to yeah. step up. Somebody's got to step I up, know, right? Does. Next, next man no, up. Nothing I, like him not to put I'm the pressure the youngest, on, huh? Come on. <laughs> I'm the youngest in the family. Yeah. Sheesh. Well, right, but if well, you know how it is, right? The oldest get the first chance, but uh, if they don't perform, you just slap them down. I don't think it matters who's youngest or oldest. It's who wants, who ha- has that same spirit. Of, That's true. 
that's true. of the family. Yeah, and I might. I might be the one. I don't know. You have to ask everybody you know, else. That's, I don't have a That's clue. not something you decide. That's <laughs> something that just I, evolves. I know. That's how I feel about it, too. I, I don't really know. You yeah. know, I can't really tell you. So I just know we have a good time, and everybody comes to my house, so... I'm I'm lucky because I get to stay home, but it, then I have all the mess after. But it's okay. I don't mind. It's that. a good mess, huh? Yeah, and yeah. my daughter's real good about helping out. And uh, real good stuff. about making a mess? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is she the one with the most kids? The one no, with the most the other kids one. has to help. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's busy with the kids. Oh, of course. <laughs> So anyway, but that was what I did this weekend. And, I, you know, I got to tell you guys, first of all, two things. Um, I was listening to the radio coming in, and I was listening to Tom Sullivan, and they announced on his show that Eric Swalwell just got out of the race. So uh, Democratic candidate Eric yeah, Swalwell. Yeah, there is a household said, name. There you go. Yeah, well, he's from <laughs> California, so people in this area might know who he is. So they're down to and 24? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yep, so there you go, That's first one down. Of the, four, four percent of the Come volume. on, the Republicans had 17, so they have a little ways to go to catch up with yeah, that. But, you but know. do you remember what his slogan was? It was something about the bull and the yeah. and the bold and the bull or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously it didn't catch, did it? Not very well. <laughs> but it was something about, I'm, I'm bold, but I'm not giving you bull, or I don't know. <laughs> It's a crazy slogan. Would have been a great one for Trump to throw around, though, it I'm sure. It sounds to me like a Western <laughs> soap opera. <laughs> exactly. Something like that. I don't, do you remember the slogan? Do you, no. Oh, okay. I, he was uh, hoping you yeah. well, No, no uh, it was something uh, about bold No, and bold. I remember just what you said, and yeah. I thought, he no, tried that, really yeah, hard. He yeah. tried really hard to make it right, yeah, well, you know, but it just didn't work. I heard one of the talking yeah, heads saying that the reason these people throw their hat in the ring is they do it for a couple months, and then they get out, and then they can sell books, write books, right. and they can yeah, do all that. Yeah, they have you know, a higher profile. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Do, but do you? It's a platform. It yeah. is so fun watching them right on the debates, just like a, I'm a coach, right? And you're looking at people to perform. And some people have stepped up and others haven't. Yes. And yes. whether I agree with them or not, they are at the highest peak of their profession, right? They're pushing it to finish. Yeah. It's a big daggone deal. The things that I'm trying to get us to look at, think about, are things they're doing. Well, and it goes along with our topic. Are you consistent and committed to your goals? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's obvious they had a goal, but maybe it wasn't the one that the public thought it was. So maybe they are meeting their goal. You never know. Right? So you, know, that. you talk about that and talk about sports and attitude. When I was growing up playing sports, it was a slogan. I think we talked about this a little bit. And every meeting that we had, the coach would put on the board, A plus E equals V. And it's attitude plus enthusiasm equals victory. There you go. And I thought, well, I, obviously I remember it all. <laughs> But, Way back then. But That's how right. fearful do you think these folks are, right, who have been up there for the first time that are supposed to have a clue, right, right? male, female, whatever, you're asked any question at any time, and you're supposed to be relevant. Not only are you supposed to handle it, you're supposed to handle it with style well, and knock it out of the park, and very few of them have that skill. Janice mentioned Tom Sullivan, and what his slogan is, is he says, all of Congress is just C-minus students. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll agree with that. <laughs> so th there, isn't, there isn't a real high bar for them. And with that, we're going to take a break here, guys, and then we're going to come back. I know wow. it went quick. I know. Bada we're going to be back in just a moment, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this uh, consistency and commitment and yep. a couple other things. We'll be right back. You're listening to What's the Story. We're up all night, smoking it right. Fresh and delicious, through and through. A family tradition is waiting for you. Right here at Brothers Barbecue. Cater and an event or just enjoying lunch. Taste our traditional smoked barbecue beef and pork plates, bowls, sandwiches, Texas taters, and cornbread. The video, it's us on video, I guess. Now you are. Well, in a minute. You know, it takes us a little while for it to process. No, no, now. now it's there. That's how long it took, though. Oh, from the time 17 that you seconds. Said it. I just okay. popped up. Oh, my name's almost right. Almost. That computer's just slightly in the way, isn't it? It's close, Did that though. help? 
Can we see it now? Can you? I see hope it they now? can't figure it out because <laughs> then they'll at least try to read well, it. it well, you, you, heard, you heard one of one of our guests or one of our hosts said, "You know, Jan, you know Dave Asher." I do. Well, Dave, Dave, to give the description to get how to get to his store here, he says if go if we're kitty corner from the Atlantis is, and if you can't find the Atlantis, you're too stupid to come to my store. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like Dave. <laughs> it, is, it is, and he has no. that on air all the time. I'm not surprised. That's a slogan you can remember. It's almost there. I just pushed it a little bit more. It'll be fine in a minute. Now now his left arm is covering the 775. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> or can you say, we fixed the 721 and now the 775. Hey, if you're out there on Facebook, welcome. Um, I don't I know, just did you did, do a watch just party? Just hit it. Okay. So Ed's got a watch party going on. I'm going to go ahead and grab hold of that. I don't know if you guys have any computers hanging out there. but um, So if you're on Facebook, welcome, like I said. And uh, we're going to be back doing the regular show in a minute. But if you have any questions or you want to make any comments, we'd certainly love to hear from you. We always do. And you got to quit reading your texts. You're not working right now. <laughs> 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 I didn't know. I thought it might have been a fan. Oh, yeah, sure. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. It's one of those loans going on. Yes. It, <laughs> I well, know. It, it was one of those uh, loan officers going ah, on. I gotcha. Yeah, you know, it never stops, right? I mean, I won't say that I don't occasionally flip over here to my email and see if something's happening. I can't do that because I'd never get back. Oh. I'm well. bad at that. <laughs> but I will say I'm getting taking the business that's good that's good so what's your topic today april i didn't get a topic from you i forgot to, I, to email you actually i was going to text you oh, okay and with the birthdays i just didn't get to no it. it's I fell quite asleep all right instead. Uh, and you know jan and i can just lean over and like spit on you <laughs> it's a local topic about virginia lake <laughs> did you oh, look good. at the video of you seen it? behind it <laughs> awesome yeah. kind of thing I can get the video, but I can't seem to do a watch party. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You're really elevated, aren't you? It looks thing. like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it put does look like we can spit <laughs> yeah, on Yeah, I know. That's what <laughs> I say. Put, di put a disclaimer out there. We're all on the same level. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What? Personal message. Mm, uh oh. <laughs> what are you two Welcome doing? back. <laughs> well, apparently we're looking down on you if you're watching Facebook. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. <laughs> that's the way it appears. Yeah. Though that's not really the case. And uh, uh oh, when an engineer walks in the room, we all wonder who did something we're wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know what? When April happens to be in that same room, we don't have to worry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Boy, jab, jab, jab. Really getting you today, April. I can't believe it. What did you do to deserve that? Uh, <laughs> you didn't <laughs> show up on Tuesday. That's what you did. I flew it somewhere, somehow. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. We Thank always you, Craig. appreciate your help. You're the best. He is. Oh, look. April Kempler is hosting a watch party. Yay, me. Looky there. I know. Oh. I can't be at both, so I'm already at his. Sorry, okay. I can't join you. Maybe oh, Doug can come to mine. So have you seen the video with Craig's head cut off? He's just standing there with his, yeah. with his hand in your business. Yeah. <laughs> That was entertaining. <laughs> that was very entertaining. It has nothing to do I'm with glad you commitment. Guys get a kick out of this whole thing. I don't <laughs> know what's going on. I think it has everything to do with I consistency do really? and do commitment. All right. I think it's yeah. because I wore a red dress. It's all bets are off. Oh, hmm. It. Okay. It's red dress Monday. Red dress Monday. I'll have to think about that. Well, Jan and I always dress in these loud, bright colors. That's right. And, and you and Doug are just so <laughs> blasé, I just can't get it. I know. We are. <laughs> <laughs> they look like the flowers in the room. I do. <laughs> we do. They put us on the right side. We, got, we look good know, together. We can just sit here and not say anything. I, I know. I can do I feel like I'm missing everything anyway. I don't know what's going oh, on. Oh, my goodness. Well, we, we, our topic today is consistency, which I think we're pretty consistent with how we start. Yes. Um, kind of random. Yes. As I like it. Goofy, a little yeah. off the wall. Yeah. Consistency and commitment to your goals. 
And one of the things that, and I hope I don't make everybody tired of hearing about this, but one of my ways of staying consistent in my life and in my business has been um, the Success Principles by Jack Canfield. He has an awesome book that I, I just, you know, I mean, I wish I could say I got paid to do this, but I do not. Um, but his book for me was a game changer. So I've read self-help books for my entire life. From the time I turned 18, I just, you know, I just, what? Um, <laughs> devoured them. <laughs> devoured them. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. I devoured them. I really did. I, I wanted to know everything. I wanted to improve be able to understand and, and improve my life and myself. I was very timid, believe that or not. I, I was very shy. I, you know, and, and I needed to help myself. And so I just would read anything and everything I could find. And at that time, there was a lot of it out there. So I had a lot of opportunity. But then later on, I came across the success principles. We happened to be um, at LaRue, and we were in the early stages of the business. And I read this, and it changed everything. So what I would say to somebody is the commitment and um, focus and consistency that you need, you have to find the thing that works for you. So this might work for me, but April might pick it up and go, eh, you know, that's nice and it's good and it's got a good information, but it really doesn't work for me, right? I, I don't embrace those principles in that way. But it's not that, they're, that the topics are bad or the way it's presented is bad. It just doesn't work for her. So you have to find the one that works for you. For me, this is the one. And the, one of the reasons is the very first principle, which is take 100% responsibility for your life. And I think that that can be just about anybody. If you really want to do something for yourself. You have to do it. Yes, you exactly. You have to do it. I don't, I mean, the wind blows and stuff happens, but if you're not ultimately <laughs> responsible, <laughs> right? No, it's true. It's true. So, so I really, um, I, I just thought that was great. And then the one that works with what you're talking about in your segment, Ed, is commit to constant and never-ending improvement. So one of the problems people often have is how do you, when you fail, you know, what, what do you do, right? I mean, we're all, we, we say we're going to commit, we say we're going to do all these things, but then things happen. And oftentimes people just look at that as failure and they just keep going and, and the, or they stop going for that goal because they, oh, well, I didn't do it. I, I didn't make it. I, you know, I didn't get there. The so, deal is why. Well, yes, exactly. The why. But you also have to remember that part of this is committing to that. And even when you have a hitch in the giddy up, that you get back up and you continue on and, and continue to improve yourself. And part of improvement is failing. Because if you don't fail, you never could improve, I don't think. I think everybody has to experience some failure in order to know what it is to, to do well. <laughs> Do you agree? Disagree? If you ne well, if you no. never if you never failed, think how blasé life would be. Oh, well, I agree <laughs> with that. Well, I've done enough of that. <laughs> but you learn from your failure. You do, uh, and you learn how to go the right path. Yes. But you, you learn. One of, one of the well, I'm sorry. One of one of the things that I, I tried to teach both my sons growing up was you're right. Take responsibility for your actions. But uh, in, in in connection with that, I said you guys have to goal set. Right. And to make a realistic goal, number one, you have to you have to put a timeline on it because if you don't have a timeline to a goal it's just a wish well and and I think that and I totally agree with that and I think that one of the things that you have to do is you have to find that tool that helps you to have that bigger plan and and again I don't want to take away from what no, you're going to share it, because, it all align. right because it's all part of that but but the whole idea is that it's great to say I'm going to do this but without some kind of a strategy to get there, 
how do you, you know, you're going to take a trip and you don't map it out? <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, how many miles? How long? I mean, you know, you got to know those that's things, right? That's called the rudderless ship, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Now, there are times when that's good, right? There are times you want to take a trip and it's just a vacation. It's random. And you just yeah. want to go. and Never backed out of yeah, the driveway. Yeah, adventure. Sure. Yeah, I, like, I like adventures. I think adventures. that's great. Yeah. But if you have something you're trying to achieve, if, you, if you're going to be setting goals, whether that's business, personal, you know, in a relationship, whatever that is, really important to have that kind of set in stone a little bit to where, not that you can't change or, or modify. That's that so timeline. Right. What happens though, and, and this is for my segment a little bit, but... That's okay. We'll, we can... So like if, if I make a promise to you, Jan, or a commitment to you, right, to partner, to lift something up, right, my reputation's at stake. Be a co-host. My word's at stake. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Right. Right. Just because of who I am, I'm going to do it. And likely everyone around this table is going to do it. What we don't do is I'm going to do that for myself. We don't hold ourselves to the same promises all the time that we, we commit to others and help them do anything. But commitments to ourselves are like, ah, if I get to it. They're not right, commitments. Right, but that's exactly what I'm talking about is this is a right. commitment to yourself. This Correct. is a commitment to I'm going to do this for me, for my goal. So what was the pivotal thing in this book that for motivated me? you? What was the one thing? It, there was not one thing. The, the pivotal thing, I think, for me was the fact that I was able to, and maybe there is, maybe there is, and it's one of the goals that he talks about, and I don't have it here in front of me right now, but I remember it okay. very well, and it's chunk it down. So any time, and honestly, I don't know if that's like one of the main ones, but it's part of this process was chunk it down. So you've got a problem. And it seems overwhelming. It's huge, right? In your mind, at least, it's yeah. huge. So you have to chunk it down. You have to take the pieces. You have to say, okay, fine. So I've got this problem. I need a million dollars, right? Well, okay, so there have to be some strategies to get me there. And there's some steps I'm going to take to get there. So you start breaking it up. It's like Into taking that. tasks. Exactly. And you break it up so that, it's, pieces. so that it's manageable and so that it doesn't feel that's, overwhelming. That, that's called eating the elephant one bite at a time. Right, exactly. And, there's, and again, there are yeah. lots of ways this has been said. This isn't new. That's or, right. A journey of a thousand know, it's, miles it's, begins with one step. Right. It's not new information. For me, it was the way it was put together. It's simple. It's broken up into 64 different things, which I don't have to do them in order. That's one of the things for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be in a particular it, order. I want to do it my way, right? right? Yeah. And so yeah. that's all part I of it. I believe in these self-help books, right? So likely Jack Canfield has the same personality type as you. Undoubtedly. Right? Yes. So you can see that frequency. That's what yes. happens. So and like, that's why I say it is. It's right. You're going to look around everybody. if you're a driver, if you're an right. amiable, whatever you are, someone's going to appeal. Yep. Someone different's going to appeal to you. Exactly. Well, he also wrote a book and was successful with it. So that was the initial thing that drew me to him. And we're in our publishing segment, we're going to talk about this and how I'm going to apply one of his principles that will help people who are out there trying to market a book. Um, everybody goes online, and this will be part of that segment, and, and says, you know, how do I sell my book? How do I market my book? Big question, huge question, and a, a very valid question, not one that I think is bad. But how hard is that? It's super hard. You think writing the book is hard? Nope. That's easy compared to <laughs> selling your book. So I'm going to try and help some folks who might, you know, feel the way I feel about this that and give them some ideas about how they can sell their book. So that'll be in our fourth segment. So hang awesome. with us after our book blitz. So, and guess what? I just blew us right through <laughs> to the next segment. <laughs> but if you're on Facebook, stay with us. We will still be on Facebook Live, and uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to What's the Story. Thanks. That was good. Thanks for the topic. Yeah, no, that yeah. was great. Yeah, well, it was his idea. Good. Can we and can we continue on? That was, I mean, we were on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, in his segment, we're going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it in the fourth segment. I figured this was just a kind of one of those topics. Recurring that, themes. Well, and it's not something you can cover in five minutes, you know? You really it can. is. Well, and you can, you know, there's all kinds of that. lines. That's like, like saying, tell me everything you know about the earth cooling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
It's yeah. like you're all worthless and weak, right? <laughs> that that uh, animal house quote, right? <laughs> you're all worthless and weak. I love that because that kind of stuff sticks in my crawl and I want to be the opposite because I don't want to be that. Well, you know, uh, one work, of the, one my of the mind things, works weird. But. Uh, what I was taught, and it's really true, is success breeds success. You know, I mean, when you have successes, you always feel better, and then you try more. So, oh, very true. Yeah, it's a confident thing. Yeah, I had another another coach that used to say, "You show me a show me a good loser, and I'll show you a loser." <laughs> no, that's right. That's like George Patton in one of those movies said something like, "You don't die for your country. You let that other poor bastard die for his country." country. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Oh, that's yeah. true. <laughs> that was a, like that was a Patton quote. <laughs> so my huge Pepsi, you like that? I have cold brew. <laughs> and, and <laughs> they they sell these, I guess, to encourage you not to drink so much. I just drink more of them. Have you tried the, <laughs> have you tried the cold right? brew at the hub over here? Yeah, they're in and out of it, though. They have this big contraption. Did you see it? Oh, it's is it new? Brew. I don't know. I think so, they use it on occasion, and I, I don't know I, if you request it through this. I ask occasionally, and they have it sometimes, and sometimes they don't. What is it? Just cold brew. What's it's a it? special process for brewing coffee. Brewing, uh, oh, brewing coffee. Yeah, it's oh. this big glass... <laughs> You were thinking he, they were brewing something else. Exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're just talking about the caffeine buzz. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes you a type A personality is too much coffee. <laughs> that's guaranteed. <laughs> hey, I think that it's one of those legal ways that can have me push my limits. No doubt about it. Yeah. You know, one of the things that motivated me was put myself in a position. You would step up commit yourself say okay i'll do that and then then you have to i mean there's no backing out so yet. that's what i do yeah. i i get in exactly. these coffee connections in the, in the radio yeah. show and then i meet people and guess what i'm not gonna let them down i gotta show up exactly right so you show up and then you just be you how did your how did your talk go with that group it's it's the 18th you oh. could likely attend if you want it's in the, it's at the Carson Nugget. Oh, is it? It's on the 18th at noon. 18th at noon. What day is that? <laughs> Thursday or something. It's, it's one of them. So right. it's too far ahead. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, it's scheduled. I know I haven't yeah. scheduled two things. What? Already? It is fast. Just flies. That's really fast, wasn't it? It is. <laughs> I better bone up. <laughs> and now he's going to sing. Welcome back. That is the sign that it is time for our booklets, lightning our strike. lightning round of books that we share with you folks to hopefully give you some recommendations for something you might like to read. And I uh, love that cough button, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can't give my secrets away. <laughs> it wasn't a cough, yeah. really. I know. More of a cough. I know. But, but that's good. also good. Yeah, it's nice that's to a have. rude sound you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and you sit there and you go, mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to. <laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah, so good good job. All right, thank you. All right, well, you're going to be up first today. Okay, for the booklets? For the booklets. Awesome. How about that? Okay, so this is a book that appealed to me, and I wanted to share it, and I haven't read it. It's on my it's a, be real, read. it's a real book that I have, <laughs> <laughs> The Little Paris Book Shop by Nina George, and I don't remember what it's about, but I know that I wanted to read it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great recommendation <laughs> from April. <laughs> it sounded, book I remember I liked it initially, and I it know. sounded I adorable. <laughs> so, M Monsieur Perdue is a literary apothecary from his floating bookstore in a barge on the Seine. It, I've been to Paris and there's you come up out of the um, the it's the metro. It's not the metro. Yeah, is it the metro? Anyway, whatever it's called. The hall. 
<laughs> and there's stalls and stalls and stalls and stalls of used books. Oh, and nice. it's so much fun and I have a picture of me in front of it because I'm in love with it and my girlfriend who visited Paris the last time she was there actually bought a book there it was about a um, a little person you can't say what it that is anymore but the time <laughs> the play people we can right. say it's about some kind want. of little this person the, the memoirs of this little person and she just had to have it and I think it's in English but she she saw it she put it back then she went back and she bought it so you have to buy uh, a book from one of these Paris booksellers in these stalls but this one is on a barge on the Seine so um, he and I do this too using his intuitive feel for the exact book a reader needs Purdue men's broken hearts and souls the only person he can't seem to heal is himself he's still haunted by heartbreak after his great love disappeared she left him with only a letter that he has never opened after Purdue is finally tempted to read the letter he hauls anchor and departs on a mission to the south of France hoping to make peace with his loss and discover the end of the story he dispenses his books and his wisdom along the way showing that the literary world can take the human soul on a journey to heal itself. Isn't that cute? It is. I just want, I can't wait to read it. I think part. I saw it, you have that on Goodreads, right? Because I think yeah. I saw it on there and I yeah. think I might so have said I want to read it too. The Little Paris Bookshop <laughs> by Nina George. And I just can't wait Perfect. to read it. All right. What do you got for us today? Well, uh, We're going to go with the colorful people first. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is always in front of me. The this is, uh, the uh, uh, this is going to add emphasis to brevity because I, uh, one of the things I, uh, I usually <laughs> use my, mor my, uh, my mornings, my Monday mornings to, to bone up and to, you know, so I don't come in flat footed. Well, here I am flat footed. <laughs> so I'm going to recommend a book. I've read it. It's by Larry McMurtry. It's called Dead Man's Walk. And it's a good old-fashioned Western. And Larry McMurt McMurtry is the author of 31 other books, mostly Westerns. And his probably his most famous is Lonesome Dove. And so with the, with the emphasis on brevity, buy it. It's a good book. And read it. <laughs> Dead Man's Walk. There we go. He did a lightning round. That <laughs> was your favorite. Okay. You know, I'm in there to like changing speeds <laughs> on it. And it's like dancing to um, Freebird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're up. All right, so um, in my line, I got Brave New World. Any book that has an acronym is worthy, right? <laughs> Brave New World, B&W, if you read it. Um, Aldous Huxley, right? Uh, wrote this around 1932-34. I think it is eerily familiar with today's world. Uh, certainly with uh, drugs, uh, Soma, right? A lot of the way the country's going looks like he saw that, right? This was written the same time as uh, uh, the AA manual, which is kind of funny seems to me like at, after World War One, they were solving problems, right? They were looking or to at live. Least trying. <laughs> yeah, right? People were looking forward um, into the future, that kind of thing. And working it, together, always, looking forward. I just, um, it always brings me to this question, right, is um, that sci-fi kind of is the future, right? Because people pursue what's the future and what they perceive to be the future is sci-fi. So who does what, <laughs> right? Do, you know what I'm yeah, saying? So looking at me and I'm just blinking Well, slowly. like, right? You got the tricoder with, uh, yeah. right? It's right? a, no, it's it's a phone, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. all these things. I mean, yeah, I guess we can get Scotty Craig. Yeah, pretty quick. I think we should get Craig out here. But yeah, beam me back to uh, the Atlanta spa. I, I think these sci-fi writers of the back in the day were foretellers. Like, for, right. I don't know. They had crystal balls. I don't yeah. know how they saw this stuff. They did, though. They really did. And I think it's the looking ahead. I think it's just like anything else, right? We have a, a brain that's a muscle, and when we practice doing stuff, we get better at it. That goes hand in hand with the commitment to goals. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. does well, indeed. But When you to, talk about muscle, you'd have to talk about atrophy, too. <laughs> <laughs> so huh yeah no, no <laughs> doubt about it but you know what most people don't get to atrophy <laughs> <laughs> but out of Suxley's brave new world awesome that's a great choice and I did in keeping with our topic of commitment etc this is a book that I have read 
and, and at the same time I was working on uh, success principles, this one came to light for me. Multiple Streams of Income. It's the second edition by Robert G. Allen. And the reason that I, I think, it, and it isn't necessarily that you would even follow anything that this person says in this book about what to do, per se. It's that it's it's a concept, and the concept of multiple streams of income is really important in diversifying your wealth. So although you may not want to be the next fix and flipper or whatever <laughs> else he might recommend in here as a way of making you know more wealth, it inspired me to think differently. It inspired me to say, okay, eh, I'm not going to do that, but what can I do? I've got this business, and as you guys all know, we have a diversified business. We don't have a business that does just one thing. This is part of that inspiration, was to say, if you're going to become wealthy, you do just one thing. I mean, I know there are people that do and can. I didn't see myself being that person. I was going to say, we talk about learning from mistakes. Yeah. I have one income source 10 years ago, bada boom, bada right. bang. I'm just right. digging my butt out. Exactly. So diversify or die, that's sort of what I got from this. And um, so I, I think it's a worthy of a read, and you take from it what you will, but multiple streams of income, second edition, Robert G. Allen. And that's my recommendation. I have a point on that, if I may, real quick. Sure. I was going to say, like realtors back in the day or mortgage folks back in the day, we make our money on transactions. Those folks bought lots of homes. Bad move, right? You're not diversified. Same business. Right. That business goes up and down with your income. Right. Right. Uh, pick something else. Yeah. Trust me. I had many failures yeah, in yeah, that yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> right, know. that's not diversifying. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you have to really think about that. And some of this taught me that as well because it seemed that was the direction he was going. So anyhow, um, I know we're not going to have enough time for you okay. to do your Reno gal says in this segment. So I'm going to go ahead and just cover real quickly okay. what I was going to talk sure. about so that you have the next segment. Awesome. How's that? All Perfect. right. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So Reno gal says is going to come up in our last segment of the day. And in the meantime, I want to share with you folks about um, being consistent and committed. And if you're one of those people um, that asked maybe on Facebook, like I saw just, I think this morning, what can what can you do to market your book? How do I get my friends to buy my book? That was what I saw. How do I get my friends to buy my book? Somebody said, if they're not your market, they're not gonna. Don't make them. <laughs> Which I thought was a great answer. Yeah. Um, and then probably the most asked question is how do I how do I get my book sold? So you're going to hear a lot of answers. Companies might promise you the moon, right? They're going to tell you, oh, we'll do everything. We'll, we'll get you in bookstores. We'll send you to a large list. We'll put you on your, our web page. And you know, you're going to be told to give talks, give your book away free, put it in any store that will carry it. Yes, all those things. And, and they're all good. Some of them are even great ideas, right? But um, the story that Jack Canfield tells about how they made Chicken Soup for the Soul sell 8 million copies, it took them two years of focused efforts using what he calls rule, the rule of five. And that is success principle number 23. The rule of five is do five things every day to move your book forward. So I said, well, how am I going to figure out how to do that, right? First, I want you to write down everything you can think of that might sell your book. Then search the internet. I searched 100 ways to market my book. I got everything from five ways to 1,001 ways, okay? <laughs> Take all those ideas, choose the ones you like the most, and also the ones you like the least but that you think will work. Eliminate the ones you'll never do. When you're done, you should have a pretty good list. Break them into a calendar and what you'll do for those five things every day. And if you have a marketing team, whether it's family or a paid group of people, distribute that and get going. Okay? That's my idea. Well, it sounds easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, so... You only have a minute, but go ahead. <laughs> in The Secret, right, he was one of the people who put a check on the ceiling. And he woke up every day looking at a check of 100000 I think it was. Yep, there and you go. And that was his original passion and motivation. Well, see, same idea. 
five things, five every day in two years, maybe you'll have a bestseller like Jack Canfield. Let me know if you've done it and if it worked for you. You can This do is it. what's the story. We'll be right back. <laughs> With Reno Gal says. Nice. <laughs> Thanks. You were talking about all those uh, promises, <laughs> and I go, yeah, 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 right. I, I've heard those. <laughs> Everybody's heard those. You know, it's hard. And you got to believe something. Well, the thing is, I believe that they're valid. I believe that the companies, most companies, I even think the company you were with initially, yeah. really does believe those things are going to work, that to some degree, on some level. The problem is, is with all the people who have their publishing books, you have to focus on it yourself, and you have to make a decision. I'm going to make this work. It's the same with banks and it's loans. It's the commitment and right, consistency. There's a, they have to have a system that fits most. Doesn't fit all. That's right. But it fits most. But that means you're probably not going to fit exactly. You know what I mean? I, I know what you mean. <laughs> it's totally that way for banks. Yeah. And so big, I think, tries to fit the needs of folks. They just fail to do so. Yeah, well, but even big, mid-sized, little are all trying to do the same thing. And it's up to the individual. It's like marketing your business, right? We have to focus. We have to take those leads that we're getting, and we have to follow through on them. Back to your answer, it would seem to me it would be prudent to give your friends a, a coffee table book, <laughs> right? Whether it's pretty, just sit it right. on the coffee table. They don't have to go, you don't have to read this. Just put it out. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because you so know what? That'll make those them, words. No, that'll make them read it. <laughs> if you tell them you don't care if they read it, they'll right. read it. Here. Yeah. Well, th these people are looking for them to buy the book. You can't always expect your friends to buy your book. They're not necessarily going to. Some will. Some are very supportive. But some people, they know they're not going to read it. And, you know, and some books you want to give away. You need to have a certain you know, budget I, for a certain number of books that are going to be I given away. I believe very strongly in that because the best form of advertising is word of mouth. Right. And if they read it and enjoy it, they are going to tell people exactly. that are the, the buyers. Yep. So I, yeah, right. I agree with yeah. that. So, so uh, you know, and it, but it's just a hard business. No matter what, it's hard, you know. And, yeah. And it's, it's disappointing to people who go in with that huge passion and love for what they're doing. And they love their book. And everybody's told them it's good. And it could be. And even if it is. It's but not about being good. It's see, about uh, how you get it out there to market. I think you get to chuck that, right? And and just go, hey, this is for my own good, right? This is me getting it out there. I feel good about it. And if it sells, great. And then go about doing well, it. Well, they've proven that there are mediocre writers that sell yep. hundreds of thousands of books. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? that's, that's right along with the slogan, I, I, I'd rather be lucky than good. Yeah. <laughs> It's no, true. Which is true. It's the same idea. Yeah. And once you understand that, then you can get focused and then, you know, regroup yourself and <laughs> She's busy over here. She's getting ready. For Reno gal says. <laughs> Reno gal. Who's that? <laughs> what? Welcome back. You're listening to What's the Story? And we kind of blew through the book blitz and, and my little thing on publishing. And, uh, we had a good we time doing it. We had a good time doing it. Now it's time for April Kempler. Me. And Reno Gal says, I want you to visit Kempler Design at KemplerDesign.com. Pick up a copy of April's book either locally or at the Nevada Marketplace or the Rue Press or go online and you're going to find The Altered Eye by April Kempler. Yeah. And now we have <laughs> April Kempler, who is Reno Gal says. Thank you. What a fantastic <laughs> introduction. Got all your businesses. Every, all my business. <laughs> I'm going to say, you got to be good to live up to that. I, it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> okay, so I want to talk about um, a local uh, man. Well, he's dead now. But he <laughs> was a Reno, a Renoite from back in the day. And he, he died in, um, I don't even know when he died. He was born in the 1800s. Does this go back to Yosemite? No, 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 no. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Who so was it? I belong, his name's John Henry, John Henry Reeve, Jack Henry Reeve. And so I belong to the Historic Reno Preservation Society. And they have a little magazine that they bring out. And so I was at Virginia Lake uh, here in Reno. 
and with my father-in-law and <clears throat> we were talking about this lake it's always been here it's a man-made lake but they don't let you fish on or boat on it or swim in it or do anything with it and it's just a haven for all these different flocks of nasty birds, birds. yeah yeah <laughs> well there's corm okay so there's cormorants <laughs> there's um geese and ducks and they even stock the fish uh the lake with fish uh, rainbow trout bass some other fish big fish i saw some big you fish. saw big fish. i saw big fish so i was thinking <laughs> what is this virginia lake here in reno and <laughs> coincidentally i was reading this magazine called footprints and there's an article by debbie hinman and it's about jack reeve being the unsung hero of reno's parks so back in the 30s there's this long story about him you'll no one gives him credit for this Virginia Lake Park, but he really was the person responsible for that lake. He was a gardener here, um, and he was originally from England, and he came as an American citizen and, uh, and, and moved to Reno, and he worked for the, um, he was a horticulturalist, and so he was responsible for getting a lot of um, trees donated for these there's two projects in 1936 it was under the works project administration because during the great depression many men were out of work and they were <laughs> this is why we have getting back to yosemite crazy <laughs> trails <laughs> <laughs> up these crazy mountains that were asphalted because these men were like sure i'll work for 25 well right today. that was the and government program exactly so we have these two parks the one is uh, virginia lake and it began in 1936 and he he there's a fountain that's still there to this day and it's made out of tufa which is tufa i didn't know is a is a porous rock and they dug out uh, rocks from the pyramid lake region and they uh, look like shells and it's a three-tier thing and you can go see this fountain it's still there so there's a bit of history for reno and this you you can walk around this park to the state it's beautiful uh, there are a lot of nasty birds <laughs> 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 but this is a park and a lake with a lot of history and the credit goes to this man jack henry reeve and there's no plaque in his honor you won't even huh. know that he's the one responsible and and so that makes you kind of thing you can do amazing things that will stand the test of time and 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 look how many generations have enjoyed this lake long after this man has lived and died and we don't necessarily need the recognition but it's sure nice when people dig up your history <laughs> <laughs> but, i don't know i i guess that's that's a question you know do you lose the history if you don't provide that recognition that's the question i think well, he, I think he deserves a, a plaque yeah, yeah i think he does too maybe maybe, <laughs> so. maybe we'll have to start a little <laughs> thing <laughs> so you know i always have a little you don't like Virginia Lake, I can tell. <laughs> he doesn't, but maybe you'll look at it with new eyes. So uh, I new eyes. There's the well. Hopefully, I'd be blind. I, I mean, there's no place to sit or lay down. To there those, are. Those there is. ducks are poisoning that lake and killing those oh fish. And to me, the birds. Are they killing the fish? Really? I don't to think me, so. It, to me, that do you that, have evidence of these killed fish? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go test the water. Go test the water. Oh, they're going to go toe to toe well, here. Apparently, <laughs> apparently this man, um, Mr. Reeve, saved a child from drowning. He was a 10-year-old boy. He was in the lake, and he, he helped him to survive. But maybe this is why ever they don't allow swimming there. Maybe they just, you know, people. It's because it's disgusting. <laughs> this gentleman <laughs> this gentleman did a great job. but, but Okay, the, back in the 30s and 40s, it was new. <laughs> <laughs> but they and fresh. Right. I had no idea you were going to stir this up, did you? Well, you got the well, well, going. We have to. We have to incorporate last week with this week, and <laughs> I, I got to thinking about your trip to Yosemite okay. on the trail, and I kind of have to apologize a, a, a little bit for my attitude. Oh but no! People handle stress all in a different way. Yes. And we were. We were. Terrible well, to you. I mean, we humor. we kind of exactly. You were and we, to me. No, it really and, was. We, and we didn't look at you as a person telling those stories. We just looked at the story. So I re imagine that that was a very traumatic thing. <laughs> it kind of was. Well, I have another traumatic <laughs> story. <laughs> Okay, what traumatized us this week was a mouse made a nest in my husband's truck, and when he started it, apparently he. Oh, to killed it. <laughs> now we're having to get this out. It's causing us seven hundred dollars. So there are oh lots of goodness. traumas in my life, and yeah, my that's just wires. one of them. Yeah, I've had that. Mice but are such no, a problem. But no, back to the but, parks. Okay, yes. It's, for me, if you can't lay down, 
There is shade, a and there's picnic benches and tra a trail. It's a mile long. I just don't think any of it's clean. It's all no, got. No, it is clean. It's very nice. I need to Have you been there lately? I haven't been there in a year. I haven't oh, been there in a year. But uh, I they cleaned it up about two, two, three months ago. They, they cleaned it all up. I was yeah. going to say, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> in my corner. <laughs> well, they need it. I'm telling you, they, there's birds. That was called oh. a political birds have political more rights than we got. Okay, well, we do need a call. Maybe we need a call to action to pay attention to some of our history. They are wiping out Reno history. They're tearing down homes, the university. There's these old little houses that have have so much history. What's and the historical society doing about that? Are they they trying they're to trying to get people to adopt these houses, and one got moved. But One no. got moved. And it's very expensive to move a house. Oh, yeah. They move Absolutely. them all the time here, though. And I think we really look after them. <laughs> you have no sympathy for Vegas. <laughs> no, no, no. This is our history. And in, Vegas, it. in Vegas, <laughs> they just tear it. it all down. There's no history in Vegas. They just tear it down. Here, we save. We move homes. What? We do all kinds of things. There are here. no old homes in Las no, Vegas. They, so they, right. they imploded the Mapes Hotel. They're yeah, imploding. They did. My mom was They're, upset they, about the that. The Masonic That's Temple. The, they took that away. No, They're it's... They're taking these houses away for campus the masonic right? temple is still um where the brook is the first masonic well temple. all right but i'm just saying <laughs> they really try to keep stuff here i've lived in lots of they places do, but it's not they really try to keep stuff here in vegas in can. arizona in la but it's not no. they're not going to well keep. i think that that <clears throat> april should do a Reno gal says written about this. Yes, and I have been thinking us, about this for yeah, too long. Give us, give us some, you know, some background on what they're trying to save, and you know, maybe there are more people out there that might be interested. You never know. If Even you have if a he's heart, not. Ed has no heart. No, I give a hoot. <laughs> I, I give a hoot, and I'm glad they do it up here. I'm just saying they do, we do it more up here than other places I'm aware of. That's because we had more to do it to, though. Maybe. Well, you look at Las Vegas. It was just yeah. A, but go, my brother lived in upstate New York, right? They've that's been a city since twelve twelve. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. The East <laughs> no. is way older <laughs> in lots of stuff. We don't have anything older. Why? Because they keep tearing it down. <laughs> my brother, my brother thinks we've been a state since nineteen sixty five. I don't know what they could do about the geese. Some of them are really sweet and cute. There aren't too many bir birds. There are shorebirds. It felt like I was at the beach, too. All you have to um, do is open it up to hunting. <laughs> <That'll> <laughs> I don't think that'll work at Virginia Lake. Thank you. No. I, I think we'd have some problems I don't, there. I wish they One would. shot. They're okay. gone. And to Ed's They're point, gone. I wish it was cleaner cleaner birds are right. very messy right. then they could why are there not little paddle boats they could be selling uh rentals and people could see be out the entrepreneur having, in her because company. there's e coli <laughs> <laughs> i don't think so but perhaps <laughs> it's no okay yosemite has oh, poisoned water too because i can bear just the top itching of the to join in on this conversation yeah but there's only one bear right there's only a couple of bears there's not five all the bears and the pumas and the cougars and the deer and who knows what put everything in that river water and well, then you time, guys want to get out of Michelle, she's here. <laughs> you know what? I drink Yosemite water. Oh no, no! I no. wouldn't drink no, Virginia you Lake get water. So sick. You're crazy. I would drink. Let's, I'll drink Virginia City <laughs> I, water. I think I'm you're enjoying drink, this. You're gonna drink Virginia City Lake water? <laughs> yeah. I'll take that bet. I'll take that bet right now. I want to see it. You better have. Hey, some, I have a filtered. You better drink. have some of Doug's first responders around because you need, need them. I need a CPR guy around me. Well, this is definitely not the um, vacation video for Reno. That's for. Sure. Well, this is so <laughs> relaxing. He's against, and I'm for. Just come check it out. This man gave his life in in trees and art, and he did a good job. And, and, and you honored it. him, and that's a nice thing. For Only you because to I was do. there, and I was wondering, what is this lake? Well, yeah, I've seen this cool. lake for 20 years. I don't know anything about it. That's very cool. <laughs> and Doug and I just got to sit here and laugh. It was fun. <laughs> no, I value it. They just need to protect it. Yeah. Oof. All right. Well, mm -hmm. there you go. So hey, you uh, get the I last word on my segment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting to see a Reno gal says on this very soon. <laughs> That's right. She'll have one for you. Awesome. <laughs> All right, and that's a signal that we are going to hit our long break, but don't go away if you're on Facebook or if you're listening. Come back with us after the news for our second hour of What's the Story. We'll still be here. We hope you'll be with us. We'll be right back.
<laughs> um, so that's one of my pet peeves. Is I that can park, tell. Parks, oh my goodness! Parks are for people, right? And if you, not I mean, birds. <laughs> not the shit. The size of big dogs. It's ridiculous. Then they can hire people, right? We, it no. could be a job, a job hunt. We no, have they're protected that animals. Well, no, right? we this hire people to clean. I mean. Birds need a lot of cleaning up they got, after. You know what? There's all kinds of territory out there, all wide open, where they can pee and poop and do their business way abroad. They don't have to do it in urban centers. Well, have you noticed we have a big homeless community here now, too? It's What's going on with that, too. We do? They've it's stopped not that citing. big. Oh, no. It's worse. It's very it's, no, bad. It, it's worse, but every yeah. place is You're worse. You're talking about no, this burst just sort of been. made went yeah. hand in hand to me with this homeless problem. I, I drive down my street going out of the office, and they're along the the lake there, and really the outer edges. Yeah. My understanding is that they've stopped citing them. They've been, the it's RPG a safe has been place. told to stop citing them. So if you stop citing, they're going to stay. Gonna stop yeah. citing them for being there? Yeah. They got no places for them. Yeah. I mean, it's sad, but Oh, but we need to I'm not healthy. We need to and import I more. Go. We have to have more. So I get that too. You know, I get it too, but then they should be able to be cited and have them move on if they choose to live on the street and some of them are never going to get off the street. They're just never going to. But I don't think we have the problem that California has. It's but like we twice. will if we continue. Sacramento to is. Hey, we'll just have to try harder. Yeah. Well, we, we always do. We always copy California to our own demise. Let's clean up the but lakes. The problem but let's that we have address have these real people too. Yeah. These real people problem. Your kids. I wouldn't feel safe with my kids out there. Playing. The bombs would sleep in the. They would sleep in the parks if they were clean enough. They're not clean enough for them to sleep in. Maybe that's the philosophy. Maybe it is. Seems to me like that's best space, better space than the one they're sleeping on now. I don't think there's a real <laughs> immediate solution to any of it, but. No, it's I just problematic. Don't think, I just well, this don't has think been we fun. should <laughs> stop citing people. I think that you have to get move them to appropriate places meaning homeless shelters and if we overfill our homeless shelters then we know we have a problem do do I don't know that they're really overfilled at this point no I'm I'm sure they build them I mean so yeah. to me when you build stuff people come yeah <laughs> right they we do. created yeah. our own problem yeah I know I just don't know if it's overfull I don't have that that so working with the Eddie House and those kids, most of those folks really don't go because they but get they abused. Can't. Yeah, they can't because they get abused. That's yeah. a whole different problem, though. Because I know what you're talking about with the Eddie House. I get that. But that's a whole separate thing because they're young. The older people, they're going to take off, are you? the drugs. Like they're, the you know. <laughs> you're running? <laughs> you're not going to give me grief are you on come my Thursday segment? this time? Thursday is our next event. Okay, I think I can. Okay. I have at I'll remind you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> My head is a spaghetti. It's the And I'll see if I can have something gluten free for you. How's okay. that? Awesome. If you'll show up. Okay, you know what? If I bring something, you can bring it. Then I will be responsible. All right. Those. You get there hard you go. candy. Okay. Bye, <laughs> Bye, April. Bye, Bye, April. Bye, April. Hey, your subject was great. I didn't it mean was. to tear it up. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> it's very exciting. Oh, yeah, that was great. It was good. We talked about bringing her out of her shell. Yeah, uh, you did. Uh, we, we did. did. <laughs> you did good. We did. Yeah. But she's uncomfortable now. No, she's not. Okay. Oh no, I don't okay. think so. No, she's fine. Because that's a, that is one of my things, man. Taxpayer dollars, and you can't like take your kids there. How about me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <I'm> like, uh, <laughs> Did you? How about taking care of people in this country first? Remember, you're on Facebook. I know. <laughs> Remember, folks. <laughs> we're on Facebook. <laughs> it's good, man. See, we're getting edgy. <laughs> Talking about duck shit and parts. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's important. Uh. <laughs> Best I know, we're paying for it. Don't know. Well, you know, with with wildland fires, forest fires, in some of the protected areas, that you cannot use motorized equipment. That means tractors. Even with a it fire. Means tractors. That means chainsaws. That means a whole. So if you want to create, a, if you want to create a fire break, you have to go in there with axes and saws, because that's what's natural. <laughs> it's amazing. Hmm. We're quiet today. Who, me? Well, all of us. Oh. I'm not usually so quiet during the break. Not enough sugar. I was listening. <laughs> this guy was talking about. I know, I was listening too. <laughs> I was telling um, Ed that I got a response from one of my articles in what's the story which was interesting a guy emailed me he challenged me on something that I had said oh really it's cool yeah yeah so I responded was it a good yeah, challenge he, um he had a point it was different than the point I was making but we we sparred a little bit and that was nice you know it's good to be able to do that well I think when you spar just like us talking right, right. you get below the surface to things that people are interested about well and the nice thing was he even said he says I'm being a little bit picky about this but that was the point of the article so I'm gonna pick on that right oh uh, that was a good point I still disagreed but <laughs> it was okay you know so yeah it was it was kind of interesting I like that oh I just invited somebody who's not there You're kidding me. <laughs> Not on purpose. <laughs> you know how you just go down the line and I'm like, oh, oops. <laughs> I shouldn't have invited that person. I've done that before. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> what? Huh? Uh huh? What segment is this? Oh, it's yours. What? Huh? I thought we've talked it to death. <laughs> Welcome back. You are listening to What's the Story, and this is our second hour. And unfortunately, in our second hour, we do lose April. She has to take off and go back to Kempler Design and do her thing over there. I kicked her out of here today. <laughs> <laughs> she had a Come very on back, April. good Come on back. says. Come on. It was great. It was interesting. She thought it was going to be so boring, and, and Ed, you just <laughs> lit up. <laughs> There are some things that just kind of bother me. Yes, I guess. And, and that, Virginia Lake was one of them. And no, the, and it's, the birds. It's, it's breeding geese. <laughs> I, I don't see that there's an aftermarket for it. Oh, my god. You goodness. know, that, that exchange is so great. He's I, consistent <laughs> and committed to yeah, his position. Uh, well, you know, that, that, no, that exchange, because it does bring it up. I have a good friend of mine where you'd go on a diatribe like that, and he'd look at you, and you'd go, nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end. Huh? That's the end. Well, it is thanks to Ed Knoll um, that we have the segment, or the actually the show we do today, because he brought up this topic, and I just thought it was a really important topic, and which is why I capitalized on it. Thank you very much. And um, I also want to remind you to check out Omega Mortgage at omglending.com or call Ed directly at 775-721-4100. Um, he'll get you a loan and he'll do a good job for you. Um, but And let's talk about commitment and um, I always want to say focus. I yeah, think. Mark, Mark Borsma says consistent plus committed equals success, right? The art of having the integrity to follow through on our commitments, right? And commitments are things that we're going to do, right? They are not dreams, right. wishes. These are things we're going to do, and they're going to help us to learn to see greater success in every area of our lives. But how committed are we, right? It's just like the crying baby 
right? We're going to put that baby to bed in its own room and it's going to sleep there all night and it starts crying and we get tested. How committed are we, <laughs> right? Are we committed or do we ease the pain, right? Do you ease the pain and feed that baby or go visit it or do you right give it maybe a couple of days where it's going to cry itself to sleep but long term it's benefited right that delayed gratification the one thing about consistent and committed success is that when you get consistent how hard do you have to work before anything happens right it's a delayed gratification world and um Right, it's challenging. I just think many of us want to do things but lack the commitment to make it happen. And it's kind of sad, right, that we're not that good for, for whatever goal we choose, whether it's our children, family, business. To achieve one's life vision, the reason we were put on the planet, we must have the highest level, the highest dimension of consistency and commitment. Scott Adams would say that's when you get lucky. <laughs> right in that book when you're consistent and committed right so we're going to play a game today uh oh <laughs> -hoo, hands up out there in radio land yeah sure all right from one to ten please rate how consistent and committed you are just got to write the word consistent one to ten committed one to ten do 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 okay moving <laughs> on please have that Okay, we're going to do an exercise where um, list, since we did five before, ten things take too long, list the five things you're most committed to in your life. Write them down. One to ten, or one to five. One being the highest, five being the least highest, and spit those out pretty quick. What I'm, is it, one's the highest? One's the highest. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> One through five. Gotcha. I'm trying. I'm hurrying. Well, um, so get so give me yours. You got one. <laughs> um, family would be first. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I think number one. Second would be faith. Okay, and and, and, and some people would question that. They would put faith number one, and then family number two. Oh, okay. Because they go. They, I think they go together. And I would suggest that those are right. Those are great examples because. Um, maybe people who went to church on Sunday walked up to their pastor and thanked them. Maybe. <laughs> for sure, <laughs> no one kissed their spouse today and said, I love you, thanks for being in my life. Hopefully they have. But we need to be grateful and thankful and rights like knowing who we are, knowing what we want. And is letting that, people... Is that number three? Letting people know. Everyone's going to have their one through five family faith better business right are the top three it's the four fives where you become different right are you right a better role model for your child or are you a better swimmer than your sister i'm or, so taken up with one through three i don't know <laughs> what four and five would be well right and that's <laughs> no, why in the like, exercise oh. in the exercise you do 10. yeah that's it's a lot. really challenging it to is, find 10 yeah. things you value yeah, it is. Right, for me, like I would agree with that. chocolates on my list, right? <laughs> Coffees on my list, right? Frisbee golf. I mean, right, there's other things down the list, but certainly, right, your children's success, your, you know, business success. But again, business success, right? Let's drill down in that. It only gets better when we're consistently committed right. to doing things that move the needle, right? For instance, some some shows ago, right? I forget when uh, we were solving Jan's biggest challenge, and it was about, hey, how do we quadruple her, her business? Well, we get her four times more clients, right? It's the, so how do we move people towards her, right? We just asked, right? <laughs> right? We just asked, yeah, and thing. people moved, right? That was awesome. But it's not often that easy. Right. Right. And, you know, uh, we're in business. So we're always, the wheels are churning. There's a, there's slow days and busy days. And, right, we just want the, the net to grow. But we should in our personal lives as well. Don't we want our family to grow better, right? Don't we want, you know, for me, like, 
I try not to tell my kids what to do because I want them to make decisions Fair because enough. life is a is is series of a series of decisions and so I let them make decisions when they're younger hopefully they make mistakes then not later we're gonna have to give uh, you a longer segment because we ran out of time I'm a chatty Kathy. I know. We'll be right back. Wait a minute. Um, Wait a minute. <laughs> Nuh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go. April still You're got to drink West Virginia Lake water. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Hear that, April? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Nuh-uh. <laughs> I thought you were going to be wordy. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks for letting me run on. That was a little that's example, okay. though. No, that's good. That's really good. I, I really do think we need to give you a longer segment. <laughs> well, I, you know I can fill it. I know. Oh, I know. I just I want to I want to bring value concisely. <laughs> it's so difficult to bring him out of his shell, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yeah. Doc Prov says onward and upward, great knowledge. Who said that? Doc Prov. Oh, nice. Pavatera. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I love playing in that space, though. Yeah, well, I like it when you do the quizzes, and I, I think other people like it, too. Yeah. You know, you like you to know, be what, challenged with thinking about how does that apply. Right? Well, oftentimes when we have something in front of our bides that is so important to us, right? Yeah. No, when you're an alcoholic, that's a big deal, right? Everyone's got to know what you think's important. Well, hell, they're not mind readers, <laughs> right? It's the same here. If we don't let people know they don't know right and we too often um i do this those that are closest to me i give less attention than i should yeah you know when when i, I was, take them for granted when i was in college I, have. I had a leadership class and the very start of the leadership class this instructor had you know a big sheet of paper two by three and you know uh, marks a lot and he says what i want you to do is write on that from one to ten like you're saying what you are and you know and then you know one through ten and everybody you know i'm a firefighter i'm a dad i'm a husband i'm this but when you get three four something like that then you'd have to walk around with this and you'd read what somebody else was and then you'd read what you were but it was a forcing function to say you know what exactly are you what are your values what what are your core values what do you stand for and people like, don't know that well that it was that it's the forcing function you know so yeah and I think that's one of the purposes here. People start thinking about themselves and, you know, start doing things that are just easy to do, nice things. Open a car door, pick up a piece of trash. Oh, it's just you're a, a chauvinist. No, it's like that. <laughs> well, I am. I am. I'll give you that. How'd I do, April? <laughs> <laughs> But it's that commercial. There's an insurance commercial where one person does something nice and then it steamrolls. There's that's true. Yeah. And there's not enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. We're gonna do this so much about April. She's gonna have to stay just to I defend know, herself. To defend huh? herself exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was laughing when she had that book, right? Because I, every time she she talks about a book, I expect it to have some World War II consequences, <laughs> right? So I kept waiting for the connection, and I didn't get it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's always been my problem. <laughs> Welcome back. You're listening to What's the Story? And we are back again. And that was a great topic. And thank you again for that. It kind of covered our whole show. I was going to say gobble gobble. Yeah. Sorry for the time gobble. Oh, no, it was good. It was good. I wish we had more time. That was fun doing the questions and, and kind of figuring out what priorities we have. And, and like I say, I found it to be difficult when you get past a certain point point if i had to do 10 it's hard it yeah. is because i'm i'm pretty taken up with those first few right yeah. i mean you look at the guy next to you what'd you yeah. put for four <laughs> exactly <laughs> well right right we, yeah and when we move the needle we yeah. move them all right we're gonna move them all <laughs> yeah so you know who knows right 
So um, if you heard the music, that's normally our blues and kids. They've, they're still out there having a good time they're in the summertime. They're still having the party. <laughs> it's still like going 24-7. That's right. I think they're coming back in August. I, I haven't talked to Bobby Joe lately. So uh, originally our, our plan was for them to come back in August. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but we can always fill the time here. We always have things to talk about. Yeah. Right? Indeed. And I actually pulled up in, in honor of the fact that it is a music segment, I pulled up the stuff that's going on in Art Town. So if you're in the Reno, Nevada area or you're going to be anytime in July, we have over 500 events in Reno, Nevada during July that are citywide and, and they have stretched into Sparks and you know, I don't know how far they're going now, but, but it's not just Reno, which is really awesome because everybody seems to participate. And they have some music, uh, it's not just art either. It's literary, it's art, and it's also music. They have theater. Organ music. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> all it's ridiculous. Kinds. Yeah, it's all yeah. kinds of stuff. So, um, but they do have a blues, let me find it, blues pool party at the Sands with guest Rick Metz. So there you go. <laughs> some <laughs> blues for you. If you're looking for the blues, there it is. We better go and take some pictures and send them we, to we the We need them to, yeah, yeah, we yeah, should. Yeah. <laughs> for the seventh year in a row, seven years they've been doing this, the Sands will be supporting our town with the blues pool party at the Sands, but I won't wear a bathing suit. Every Wednesday in July, it all takes place poolside at the Sands outdoor stage from 6 to 9 p.m. The Joker's Wild acts as the house band and is joined each week by a special guest artist, Rick Metz, this week. And then later on in the night, they're joined on stage for an open jam with visiting out-of-town musicians along with some of Reno's top blues players and singers. You just never know who's going to show up. So if you want to jam and you're a blues player, <laughs> go. You it's know, a great place to go. For you folks outside of Nevada... Um, our town is just such a killer thing. It is. You know, raising <laughs> my kids here. No, <laughs> yeah. I in July, they have virtual free shows, right? Yeah, in there all are over. Plays, music. I mean, when my daughter, you know, we did something every day of the week. You could go see a play. You could right. go hear church organ. You well, could go tonight watch. at 7 o'clock, Sweet Vibrations, High Desert Harmony Chorus. So there's something for you to do right yep. there. Um, tomorrow, Summer Music at the Grove with guest Pete L Langell. Langell. I don't say that very well, but there you go. <laughs> and I was going to say, I think they have the wine walk. Say the wine walk. When does the wine walk come and pub crawl end? Right? It's like <laughs> yeah. wine walk. It's our town. Oh, wine walk. Oh, <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> oh, it's October. Oh, that's a pub crawl. That's right. right. <laughs> so they have a Reno Youth Jazz Orchestra on July 11th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, just so many things that are happening, which I just think is awesome for well, the, everyone, for the kids, for the adults. I mean, everybody gets to participate, and and it gives the entrepreneurs that are in our town an opportunity to be presenters. You don't have to be an artist or, or in, you know, really the art field like us. We're, I mean, we sell books. We do business. But we participate. We have events, and it's, I, I just find, and, and they support you. They put you into their magazine. I mean, that's really rare, I think, that you find a, a city and a community that's so supportive and that, you know, offers that much. I'm sure there are other cities that do similar types of things. I don't know if they do it quite this big. I think I've, this is a pretty You know, big the biggest city I probably lived in is Columbus, Ohio, when I was going to Ohio State. And the college did a lot of stuff. Right. Right. But I've never seen a city do the things that reno does right and then like you said the other sister cities whether it be fernley or dayton right. and carson city and minden embrace something similar right right it's kind of like you and me right we bring <laughs> something right we bring different exactly. stuff but it's yeah. the same right right <laughs> and we complement each other and i think that that's what you see here is they're they're complementary to each other i know i used to be on the board for the sparks museum and and they participate they have events you know at their establishment so so, you know, I, I, I think that when you can play well with others that way, it, it makes for better times for everybody uh, in a good economy or a bad economy. It, it helps. You know, so that's that's it does. Really and when they started, the economy wasn't so great. I mean, they have movies downtown. They have the festival music right. or the uh, movie festival. Um, it's amazing the stuff they got going. Yeah, on. it's 
it's an incredible event and um, I'm excited that that everybody gets to participate in that kind of thing so um, so just go to arttown.org and you can click on any of the links there find what you're interested in and take your kids out yep. go for you know and, and a lot of these you can just walk in they're free you know you, as a parent walk I just and, wished it and stay for just a short time and and you can go I you just know, wanted it to be 24 7 <laughs> right so every month right? if it was art town every month it would, being a parent might be you know a lot less inexpensive <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> Yeah, you got to look for that. And then I also want to remind you that um, the first annual Senior Park Party, I don't know if this is, I don't think this is a part of our town, but it is happening in July. Teglia's Paradise Park, Paradise Drive, noon to 4.30, and Sunday, it's on Sunday, July 14th. So is that the speed bump guy? That's the speed bump <laughs> guy. Yeah, I know. I thought of Doug immediately, and I was like, oh, Doug's got to go and tell him not to do speed bumps. <laughs> <laughs> well, now this is this is kind of a segue to old people too, isn't it? <laughs> no, we don't, not people, folks. Oh, old folks, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> we got old folks, right? So, so I've got a thing with that, right? So I'm like just old enough now where I'm getting like discounts, right? Right? I haven't got a discount since I was like 21, right? So now I'm getting them for. Right. right. So I'm getting no. We well, some tell. of them are kind of funny, <laughs> but but however, right? This guy with the speed bump guys having like a '60s, right? It's right down my alley. What's <laughs> What's problematic is for me is that like I'm attracted to the old folks stuff now. Oh my goodness! Yeah, they, the, old, the old folks aren't really that old anymore, are they? Uh, no. Oh, anyone old is older than me. <laughs> right? Anyone who's younger is younger than me. That's just my age. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. He's, he's not self-centered at all. <laughs> not a bit. So we want to talk about, we got a few minutes left. I was going to do this in the next segment, but we'll leave some good amount of time for okay. you to talk about earthquakes. <laughs> um, and, and speaking of old folks and folks in general, not necessarily old, this is, and I thought this was great. It says, everyone has a story. And this is from the Northern Nevada State Veterans Home. I don't know if you know that it's open, um, but it is. I didn't know. And one of the, um, actually, one of the authors, R.G. Cruz, um, it's over on 36 Battleborn Way in Sparks, Nevada. And it is um, a, an independent, um, no, excuse me, it's a long-term care and rehab facility in Sparks. And it just opened recently. And Craig, you got something you want to share? Well, for people who don't know where Battleborn Way is. Yes. Oh, that's <coughs> right. It's a, is that a new street? Well, no, it's an old street that was renamed. Okay. Um, basically, if you know where Galetti is, DMV, kitty yes. corner from that is where that, the home is. So from Galetti Way to uh, Victorian Avenue on what was Kitsky is now Battleborn Way. There you go. So if you're that in little the stretch Reno area, from, you'll understand. From Galetti to Fourth Street is is Battleborn Way, and that's another old thing we're saying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I wanted to share this because it was brought to my attention that he didn't know it was open, and he actually thought it was more of an independent living type of thing. But this is truly a um, it's a state, the Nevada State Veterans Home, and it is for long-term care and rehab. So, um, yeah, there's two long, actually two separate divisions of it right. inside the in the home. So. Yeah, long needed, and glad to see that it's there. And the other thing is that um, th there's going to be a housing complex in Carson City. The Northern, Northern Nevada Community Housing announced Tuesday. Um, this is at compliments of News 4, Fox 11. Um, that 62 new units are going to be built in Carson City. So um, they have not said when that's going to happen. Um, it's going to be built at 680 Hot Springs Road and will house local veterans and their families. So that's more of a of a home type situation as opposed to this rehab and, and um, long-term care facility. So, so yay, this is all good. Yeah. All good for the veterans. So we're glad to see that happening. And um, it all takes money, you know. And so hopefully well, the money holds out and they can get all that done. So what, getting, right, how long have 
have we been lifting up our veterans right and i mean they were beat down right and then we've lifted them up right i mean the world right certainly our country has lifted up veterans for a few years now and right. finally they're catching some breaks yep right finally we're getting some stuff going but it's just an example of there's nothing bad to the story and still it's hard to move right. people in a positive direction it is and it it's really is it's always follow the money you know yep. it's always about the money yep so anyway that brings us to our next break we have one more segment doug is going to talk about the rocking and rolling that's been going on in this side of the world awesome and we will be right back in just a moment can we ask technical questions <laughs> sure <laughs> Yeah, I'd say what? what that's oh no, we got BTS. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm adorable. I was wondering where Brian oh. was going. No, I'm sorry. That's I was my like, fault. oh, we just cut his ass out. Yeah, well, you know, we didn't need that. That segment. Yeah, did and, he, and he heard you too. I'm yeah, sorry, there, he is. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Brian, I'm moving to the end. <laughs> I'm telling you, Brian, you wouldn't know Jan. She's wild and woolly, man. She's moving quick. Yep. Oh. Wild and crazy lady. We'll, she we'll is. just surprise them now, Brian. So sorry, I was moving on. <laughs> Doing the next segment. Moving on up. That's right. I thought I called at the wrong time for a second there. I was like, Wait. You said, oh, what? What are we doing now? I bet. I bet you have a project coming up with Earthquake in the name, so we can use it. Well, I do know uh, a comedian named Earthquake. <laughs> I do. Yeah, so we can, we can uh, kind of move that into yeah, it, Yeah, right? we can align. <laughs> called a pivot, huh? <laughs> no, that's kind of an old line. do it all He's the time. Me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that, that, April? That's what co-hosts do, right? <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> We're going to have to send April the podcast. I know. <laughs> she didn't know she was so popular, did she? <laughs> it was good to see her take a stand. Oh, she did. She did, for sure. I'll bring my water next week, April. <laughs> Are you going to go to the lake and get her some water? Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> have you seen that lake water? I have not. No, I haven't been there no. in a while. Are they running the fountain things? So they keep that aerated. Yeah, style. they, run the, they run the fountains. And because the water comes in on the north side of the lake... And the drain is on the northeast side of the lake. What they actually have done is they've taken and closed it off and actually have to and draw all the water from the south end through a pipe up to the northeast side to get it to, 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 get it to flow out. So it does make it all the way through the lake and then out. Nice. It comes up through a pipe and comes out. Compared to what it was three or four years ago when all the ducks were dying and... The, the fish ducks. were dying. Well, they poisoned themselves. It's ridiculous. Yeah, they, they, did. Co they couldn't stand themselves, huh? Mm, it's terrible. So, to me, parks are for people. Yeah. <laughs> and you're sticking to it. Well, <laughs> ducks can visit. They just don't need to like. You know why they're st you know why they hang around there so much? Because it's no. free and easy. Because <laughs> the old people go out and <laughs> feed the ducks. <laughs> Maybe. The old folks. Maybe. Not people. Folks. No, you could be totally right. I mean, and, par and people take their kids out to feed the ducks. I don't. They're, somehow they're protected because. Well, the ducks aren't protected, other than you can't. You just can't chase them or anything like that. <laughs> well, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Make them land somewhere else. So you can't shoot them and eat them. So <laughs> No, no by, here we go. We want Brian. Bring him. Oh, this is right. This is. Uh, I need to set this down the line. Up. See, we're going to watch Jan do some backstroke in here. <laughs> <laughs> now we're back to our theme Eight, two, seven. Brian <laughs> traveling. Brian's here bringing his shotgun. <laughs> it's the Hollywood Rock and Wrap-Up with your host, Jason Hadley. Downloads have surged on news that celebrity manager Scooter Braun purchased Taylor Swift's music catalog. And none of the profits go to Taylor per terms of a record deal she signed back when she was 15 years old. Failing to realize she'd be signing away the rights to her own work at the time, record executives had this to say. 
Rocker Rick Springfield made the decision to postpone his annual festival in the Dominican Republic after multiple heart attack and respiratory deaths were suffered by tourists returning from the region. As if the risk of heart attack and respiratory death isn't already high enough being old enough to be a fan of Rick Springfield. Jamie Lynn Spears is returning to acting with a new series on Netflix. Her last big credit was a Nickelodeon kids show. She never really started. And that's the Hollywood Rock and Wrap Up. Follow us on Twitter at Rock and Wrap Up. Welcome back. Well, if it was April Fools, I would say April Fools right now because now it is time for the BTS Entertainment Corner and Brian T. Shirley. I lied. <laughs> uh, you had me nervous. I was like, ah, thanks she for cut right me time. out. You know what? She has really good intentions, though. So. <laughs> better fly out there and talk about the earthquake because I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's um, right. Yeah, and I just want to say prayers out to those folks out on the uh, West Coast. We, and I know folks that live out there. I haven't heard any uh, bad things from anybody I know. So I think everything, uh, everything's okay so far. It, it's, uh, it's a tough thing. Um, uh, real quick, let me just say that the No Strings Attached E-News online film festival uh, started early submission phase uh beginning of july so if you want to get in on that early phase you got to the end of this month and we've added webs um excuse me uh, music videos and we've also partnered with e360 tv so short films web series stuff like that and possibly music videos we are looking at helping you get on e360 tv through the film festival which is on roku Apple TV and Amazon Fire. So, if you want in on that and the, or the distribution deal with Shammy Media, hit us up. Uh, go to Film Freeway and just look No Strings Attached E News Online Film Festival up. Or you can go to the magazine site, nsaen.com. That's where they need to, to go. That's site. easier. <laughs> yeah. nsaen.com. Go there. <laughs> Check yeah, it out. Yeah, to do yeah. that. And there's other good and stuff on there, too. Yeah, check out the incredible video that uh vanessa hunley put yes. together for us man she did a she's good on job. the board too. yeah she does good stuff um <clears throat> today i asked a question on the post for the bts entertainment corner segment and that was how do you view social media and how do you use it <clears throat> excuse me and i think there's a lot of negative out there about facebook and some of the things they're doing and uh you know just social media but it's like any tool, you know. I, I don't. Th I, if to blame social media itself is, you might as well blame society. I mean, you really should because it's all in how you use it, how you respond to what people are uh, doing out there on social media. Uh, so if if you have a negative view of social media, you might want to go look in the mirror a little bit because <laughs> uh, um, you control uh, to a you know degree, you know what is on your page or what you view. So I think it's all in the way you use it. And when I say how do you use social media, I mean uh, a lot of people use it strictly for, excuse me, air conditioning was coming up. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, a lot of people use it for, you know, social stuff. I use, use it more for uh, entertainment to push, you know, this segment and, and my comedy shows and films and stuff I'm doing because it's, I don't have uh, a big budget to go out. I, I don't, I'm not McDonald's. I can't put ads on <laughs> uh, TV. So there's a lot of comedians and actors in my position that do the same thing. And the other thing with social media is networking. I would not be on this show if it weren't for social media. Because that's where I met Janet. is through uh, networking online. And... Leads me to the big story this week was I got to have lunch with somebody I met online, re, re, uh, interviewed on the BTS radio show, which is, this is a microcosm of that show, uh, about, I don't know, six years ago, five to six years ago. And then we interviewed him on this show, on What's the Story, uh, through this, and his name's Brian M. Hayden, and Ed... I know you weren't there. Uh, I believe Craig should remember this, but he had a heart transplant, Edward. Not what I had. I mean, they, they took somebody else's heart, took his out, put it in his body. 
and uh, seven years this month. So I had lunch with Brian. Oh, you made a post about him, right? I saw his picture yeah. with you. That was awesome. Yeah. Yes. We, this We uh, had never met in person. You know, so this is just an example of what social media can do for you if you use the tool correctly. So we had, we're sitting there having lunch, and can you imagine, you got a guy that had a heart transplant and a guy that had quadruple having lunch and discussing <laughs> our health situation. Okay, and, they, were, uh, they were sitting doctors one, next to you. <laughs> yeah, they, they were having a cigar together. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a bubblegum cigar. Um, <laughs> There you go. At one point, Brian looks at me and he said, so after your heart attack, what they do? Put in a stent? And I said, no, I had quadruple. He said, really? I said, yeah. He went, well, <laughs> so, I know, I would why am I even talking to you? Well, no, I'm joking. He didn't say that. But that's the new joke <laughs> that I'm doing on stage with the heart attack material. Because as soon as we were talking about all this, he asked me you know, what I had, and I said, quadruple. The joke hit my head. I said, what would a guy with a heart transplant tell a guy that just had quadruple? That's right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and he's got a great sense of humor. His wife also had a, a bypass. So they, they, they are, it's a, they're an amazing couple. Oh, get this. He named his heart Stanley. Yes. <laughs> Everybody I kind of like that. Everybody like needs that. to name their heart, right? <laughs> well, especially if it's not yours. <laughs> That's true. No, it, yeah, it's not yours. <laughs> and I guess I, I can't. He told us this the last time that we interviewed him because I forgot to even ask why again. I just said, "How Stanley?" And he said, "Stanley doing good." Um, Stanley, I think he named him that to make it feel more personal you know, uh, to him. I mean, it's a part of his body, but it's coming from somebody else. And I don't think that was the name of the person, uh, that, uh, the donor. But uh, an, a very interesting conversation came up with his wife and me because she was telling us the point of view from, uh, both of them actually, from getting to, should you get to know the donor's family? And that's a tough question when you're talking about somebody who is deceased and now they they are living on through somebody else uh, for you know their heart their liver whatever and uh, that's a case by case thing I think because they were telling me about a lady who had received a heart from uh, someone and the family and her got close and the heart unfortunately started failing so she had to actually get a second heart transplant and that heart was done basically and it really hurt the family because it was like lo losing their uh child twice oh. you know yeah wow. so these are the interesting things <clears throat> heart touching i mean no pun intended but um <laughs> kind of bad but no these are the things that really make life um deep and uh you know, it's, you search for meaning in life, and sometimes you find it through social media and and having interactions with these folks, especially when you get to see them face to face. So I just wanted to save that story for today. Basically, I, I, I put a little picture up of me and Brian, but I really didn't go into all of that I did here on BTS Independent Corner. And you can see him, Ed Craig. I, you've probably seen him on TV. He's done national PSAs for. CDC and the American Cancer Society. So take a look at that picture. Remember his face because if you're watching TV and uh, those ads come up, you'll you'll go, oh, that's who he's talking about. I've seen him, and he's on billboards uh, all across the country too. And I don't say that to brag about him, but I'm just saying this is how uh, he is trying to impact uh, people. He's he's trying to do a no smoking thing in Texas for kids. He's what he's behind a big thing about uh, trying to teach kids not to smoke because he smoked for years and uh, he was lucky he had his heart attack when he was in the military <laughs> so right. if you're gonna have it have it when it's covered that's what i say <laughs> you guys <laughs> you guys are so fortunate to work with your passions right and being able to get out and talk about you know um 
heart transplant or other organ transplant what you know hope it's just killer stuff man yeah. everyone should stuff. be able to work in their passion you got about 40 seconds my friend sorry brian I'm gonna wrap it up no i, I think uh, <laughs> you've got a fantastic point and i, I really appreciate you uh, saying that because you're right and if you want to find out more uh, we can pass along some stuff about Brian M. Hayden or you can look him up on uh, Facebook Brian M. B. R. I. A. N. M. H. A. Y. D. E. N. Brian M. Hayden and you look me up Brian T. Shirley dot com and thanks the again Brian's. for having me on this wonderful program along with the masks behind you all right thanks Brian <laughs> we'll see you next time we you will later. We will be right back. This is really going to be our last segment now. What? Next segment. <laughs> what? I promise. It's not perpetual? Right. No. This is, yeah. What's oh, the I story? We'll not. be right back. What? <laughs> <laughs> nice, Thank Brian. you, Brian. <laughs> Sorry oh, about you. your lead-in. That was terrible on my part. Oh, well. Yeah, and nice your there. What's the Stories are on the way, by the way. They should be. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Good. They look great. Yeah, they do. They look really good. And, uh... And sorry, I, I try not to take any time but bring value. No, no, no if, you, if you have something to say, please speak up. <laughs> oh, don't say that to him. Yeah, don't say that. <laughs> oh, You'll lose your segment. segment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to expand your segment. We're going to expand his segment. I think I'll go home now. <laughs> April, April gave me her segment. The, That's uh, right. The, Oh, all right, Brian. Well, one of these days we're going to have you come out here. I hope so. I'd yeah. love to come out there. I know. We'll Sit. find a way. Yeah. Bring your shotgun. We can get those Canadian geese. Yeah, down at Doc the, down at the lake. Doc social media is self-publicity. If you do not want publicity or to be seen, then don't use it. If you do, use it because it builds your personality by people watching, sometimes liking what you post. So there you go. Ooh. Cool. Nice job. That, that is good. Me. All right. That's your feedback, Brian. Good job. <laughs> you, know, you know what's okay, we'll good to yourself? You what's an extension of that is what we were talking about prior to this is that here's a guy with a new heart, a new lease on life. What are his priorities now? Right. How oh, did they that'd change? Be great. Your questions would be great yeah. for him. You know, how did they change? Yeah. What, how does he look or at life they? now? Well, that's... Um, well, right, they're sitting around talking about stuff that, like, we wouldn't talk about, right? I yeah. mean, their perspectives change. Right. Sure. Oh, yeah, and they yeah. have a very different perspective than we do. That's what the people that have gone through uh, near-death experiences, that's the one thing that they say when they come back that they're... <laughs> yes, yeah, different life. Yeah. Well, their yeah. values totally are different all life. different, but yeah. guess what? Most all the time, these folks are way more chill. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're yes. more... Yeah, well, they put their values in different places. Right. Yeah. And, and so they're way more, less nervous. They're more comfortable, more confident. Well, you know, especially people with near-death experiences. And more focused. Yeah. With, with their death, well, the, there's no mystery to about where they're going to end up. Right. <laughs> you know, they know. <laughs> I watched Constantine this weekend, so I know where I'm going to. <laughs> no, have you seen that? With no. that? <laughs> It's really pretty interesting. I watched the new the um, Amazon Prime show, Good Omen. Was it any good? Yeah, it's a British show. It's kind of a British comedy, but it's an hour long, and it's uh, an angel and a demon. Oh. And it goes from the beginning of time of not Big Bang ex explosion, but be six thousand years ago. People. Well, Adam and Eve, yeah, starting at Adam and Eve and goes all the way through and gives Interesting. you... Interesting. It's, it's a very funny show. Nice. <laughs> and very informative. <laughs> well, I love creative, right? Originality, creativity. It's pretty rare when you're looking you at Spider-Man 5. I, I've never heard those thoughts put together. Adam and Eve and funny. <laughs> And we are back, and you are listening to What's the Story. I'm Janice Hermson, here with Ed Knoll and Doug Ashby. We're hanging out for our last segment. I promise it really is the whoa, last segment. Whoa, <laughs> yeah, that's right. The, after, our, after our heart stents and heart transplants, and you know. say it's our last segment? I, <laughs> I think I just felt an aftershock. <laughs> 
Oh, that goes along with that comedian earthquake, right? Yeah, ah, there you go. Yeah, all right. So, uh, in part of what we teased today, it was, did you feel it? And that's what anybody who's been through an earthquake, everybody says to each other is, oh, did you feel it? <gasps> and, you know, what did it feel like to you? And how bad was it? And all those things. And and I know Ed is not a, um, a California transplant, but he is a transplant and has experienced earthquakes elsewhere. Yeah, in Ohio and right. high school was right. a pretty significant one. And uh, I lived in California and had a couple of small ones and things. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, well, when you've been through a couple of big ones, um, it's it can be very frightening. Sometimes it just depends on who you are, how you how you endure that. Um, and I think that I was watching one a program and one of the newscasters came on and he was kind of poo-pooing the earthquake because the first one, the 6.4, because it, it was in Ridgecrest and, or Searless, or I'm not sure how to say the name of that city. And, and it seemed like he says there are two, because he's from the east, right? And he says there are two cities and they're like really far from each other. So it was really, you know, kind of downplaying it. And his co-host said, I lived in California. And she like scolded him because she was like, wait right. a minute, you have no idea what it's like when you're there and you're going through this. And, and I wanted to come in and I want to give this to you, um, Doug. Doug. <laughs> what's your name? Oh, what's his I name? You all she the just time. missed the pointing. That was all. <laughs> I, but I want to hand it off to you. But hey, I, Paul, where are you? <laughs> Help. I'm going to forget my point. My point, I believe, was that when you're in that event, you know, 20 miles from you could be nothing happening. But in that square miles, whatever those square miles are, where that event occurred and it was pretty bad, because I happened to be close to an epicenter on one of the times I was in an earthquake, I know what that's like. And it's, it's frightening. And you, you don't know what's going on outside your sphere. Yeah. Um, and at the time it happened to us, of course, there weren't a lot of cell phones. There were some, but it wasn't real prominent. So you couldn't pick up the phone and call anyone. You had no idea how far it went. You, you know. And so for at least a few moments, those people are sitting in a world that they really don't know how bad it's going to be or is or, you know, or how many people around them are, are affected as well. So, um, but from the standpoint of a, of a firefighter, I kind of wanted to bring you into this. Well, you know, it, it, it's interesting because there's a, there, that, that Doug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> there's an assumption that the fire department will always be there. Right. Well, an earthquake, you know, the sun shines on all of us alike. And <laughs> you're assuming that the, the fire station isn't affected and that those people can actually get out to help you right. well with that as a, a you know a, a aside there's another thing too your brain always looks for the same things and when it doesn't see what it normally does it usually it, it affects you in different ways and one of the things is it makes you dizzy well when you when you're in an earthquake and the earth and it's actually shaking your brain brain is trying to make sense of that and it can't he's go wait a minute i'm looking out here and the mountain that's always been there is now moving <laughs> or the house next door is not there anymore or right. and so it it does it affects you mentally psychologically so you know there's that to contend with i in la county i was through four or five different earthquakes and the most notable one was when i was in 911 communications and I don't know how people do it because the earth started shaking about the same time as every light that we had in the place lit up. Yeah. And they, and, and it's amazing because, you know, you, you answer 911 emergency, you know, that said, was that an earthquake? <laughs> What's your emergency? <laughs> well, I, th I, 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 I think I smell gas. Well, now you have to send a resource out there. Can't you analyze that yourself? So right, that I right. mean, these people are tapping into we're this trying, resource. We're trying to get people better, Doug. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we're <laughs> trying, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's the frustrations yeah. of a firefighter. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well it, it, it really is frustrating because typically on a, on a typical day, if you call, made a call to 
communication center and you say, I think I have the smell of gas, we would send up to four pieces of equipment. Well, immediately we pared down, you're getting one resource right. and that's it because we're running out here very, very quickly. And our people can't clear the calls quick enough to go out and pat people's hands. Right. It's just so, you have to, they have to make sure that they actually have an emergency because Janice, you were actually right. You know, your area might be the epicenter in total destruction where a mile away they were rocking and rolling and nothing actually right. happened. Right. So, you know, it, and, and that's the, you know, the, the triaging of what you have to do. Right. But it's, it, it, it's amazing within the fire service, there are certain protocols that you go to immediately. And the first protocol is we started the discussion with are you available to respond? You know, and, and being available to response, the, one of the first things that you do is make sure that the people that you're with are okay. And what's going to happen if you get that call from home and said, no, the house is destroyed? Where is your firefighter's loyalty? Is he going to abandon you or is he going to go help other people? Now, that's a pretty tough question. That's so far, we haven't, question. so far we haven't had to answer that question, but it's certainly a logical one. And today on the news here, uh, Janice, you probably heard it on the way in because Tom Sullivan was talking about it. In the next, I'll see if I can remember this correctly. In the next 42 years in San Francisco, there's the likelihood, a 72% likelihood of a major earthquake happening. And th when they say 42 years, what they're saying is the 42nd year is the same as the first year. Right, exactly. That <laughs> logic is in there. So, right. you know. Yeah, it, it's an unknown. It's and, a total and, unknown. Yeah. What people don't know, too, is that like, there's a major fault that runs under Lake Tahoe. Right. <laughs> oh, people know that. Yeah, yeah. This person so, knows that. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> that if, if there is a if there is a major earthquake on that side in the, in the San Francisco Bay Area, chances are it will we'll also cause a, it'll ca cause a rupture on this one, and the east side of Lake Tahoe, Incline Village, and such will now become Pacific Coast <laughs> property. Property. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be Little Mermaid, tight as its home there in Spain. But you know what? Think of, think of the loans you can make for these new homes. Well, I was about to say, man, California's got another amusement ride, and that's what they get for their higher taxes, right? They get, yeah. Not only do they get, they get oh fires and earthquakes <laughs> extra. Yeah. But, it, but the fact that this happened in Ridgecrest, which is is really in you know in the desert there isn't a lot around however there were 20 some odd thousand people living in this town that's pretty sure. substantial it yeah. was as and close to vegas as it was LA. exactly yes it was and people in las vegas were affected they were at least felt it and like you said doug you your whole sensibility is rocked you yes. know you're you and now you feel a big sense of insecurity you know you're i mean the ground you're walking on is moving and yeah you how do you process that stop, yeah, right? how do you process that? i think it's a yeah. figurative thing it but is. it comes down to who am i right yeah. right who right. are you right and all well, those kind of things the earthquake people. that they had years ago in alaska the one that did you know not only not only damage for the earthquake but the tsunami that followed afterwards buried the birdhouse the, uh, oh. it the earth shook there for so long that the mind caught up with it and people are worried oh they have this anxiety and they're rocking around oh my gosh what will we do and then they're going well i guess this isn't so bad I, oh i wonder when it's going to be over <laughs> i mean the mind process but i guess that. that's how you survive yeah, exactly right? you, yeah you have to yeah. Ta you have to compensate and you have to find a way to make it work yeah yeah. yeah, it's frightening. It's very frightening. I, <laughs> well, I hopefully we'll never have to. Well, that's that. That's yeah. when you live in this country, it's going to happen. Yeah. And you can only hope that, that we're prepared and that not that many people will be injured. Right. I mean, the building code has tried to get, uh, keep up with it, so right. that's a good thing. Yeah. I, and, I mean, there are so many things we could talk about, you know, surrounding this topic because earthquakes don't just happen here, just like, you know, you were talking about being in Ohio right. and experiencing that. They happen across the country. Yeah, but we there's nothing but cornfields there, though. Uh, yeah, but that's <laughs> like saying there's nothing but desert where they yeah, are, right? Exactly. The same story. <laughs> so I, I think that we just all have to, you know, be conscious of the fact that 
that emergencies happen and be as prepared as you can. One thing they were talking about, I have to do this quickly, they were talking about the fact that you should have a, like a go bag. And I laugh every time I hear that because I think you don't even know where that go bag or where your water is going to be. I mean, it could be well, how underneath about this? rubble and well, well, who knows, wait right? A minute. Let's back up the we truck here for a, a second. <laughs> where where are you going to go? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, I have, I my, agree I with have you. my go bag. Where am I going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't know where we're going. A bimbo inn, I think. <laughs> I think we're going to the bimbo inn. Right. Hey, tomorrow, I want you to be right here with me when I co-host on A Pinch of Basil with Basil the Comedian. We have Harry Basil. He's a stand-up comedian and comedy club operator. So, 3 o'clock tomorrow on KCKQ, 1180 AM. I'm Janice Hermson, here with my guys, and we'll see you next week. Hootie hoo.